If you like to draw, this is a great new technique in enameling. We're going to incorporate graphite pencil into enamel. In order to do that, we have a slick surface here and we have got to open up the pores of the enamel so they will accept the graphite and the pencil. So we're going to go over to the sink and put some chemical on it. Follow me over. Notice that I've gloved up. We're being sure that we're safe with this chemical that we're going to put on. This is what we're going to put on the glass. It etches all glass and it has a very low percentage of hydrofluoric acid in it, which is not good for anybody. We're going to take the container lid off. I'm going to use a brush that I'll designate only for armor etch so I don't cross contaminate. I've got my disc on a piece of um, towel so I can throw that away and I'm going to put a coat on there that's fairly thick. It needs to be about as thick as toothpaste on here. Otherwise you will get some um, brush marks in there. That could work out to your advantage, but for this particular project we want a nice deep etch on here. I'm going to clean my brush off. I'm going to cap this off and I'm going to put that in the nasty cabinet. So our piece has been sitting here for about 10 minutes. You can leave it on longer. It's not going to go anywhere, but I'm usually ready to start on my project by then. So I'm going to come to the sink with gloves on again. I'm going to rinse this off, but that's not enough. When you've opened the pores in your enamel, little bits of this armor etch will stay down in the crevices. And if I put this in a box and didn't use it for a day or so, I would see a white haze, so the piece is still etching until I really clean it up. I take an old toothbrush and I take some of my surfactant, which is a detergent with no soap in it, and I'm going to scrub my piece. I'm also going to do the back because it has a way of scooting around to the back side. And I'm going to rinse thoroughly. And when this piece is dry, it should have a very satiny white finish, like that. Now we're ready to draw. We have armor etched these two discs. I've done a couple of them so I can show you different imagery that you can put on your piece. Uh, although I'm an artist, I don't draw very well, which is why I like mechanical things and I, I'm a tool. I like to work with tools, but I'm not a very good artist. And that's when these templates come in very nicely. So I'm going to show you some projects that I'm currently working on. They're a little bit bigger, but this is graphite that's been encapsulated into the enamel. So my analogy for this is you've gone to get a facial They've steamed your pores open, and then you go home and put a bunch of heavy makeup on. So the graphite is the heavy makeup. We're putting on pores that have opened up in enamel. We're putting dirt in it. We're putting it back in the kill, and we're sealing that in place. So I'm going to draw through here, and I'm going to use just almost any mechanical pencil will work. The harder the lead, the darker the color. So I'm going to place this on my, my piece, my disc here, and, and I can just color like this. Pretty easy. So if you wanted to draw a heart or a flower, oh, you'd have to do it yourself because I'm not very good at that. But you could also add lines in here. And I like that you can smear the graphite. It really makes it look like someone has been involved in this piece. It's kind of a more burnished look that um, I like to get in my enamel work. So this is part of the logo of Cool Tools. I'm going to draw here. 
and then I'm just going to color it in. Now, the only problem with the graphite is you cannot do multiple firings. Uh, it gives up after a while. You can probably go in the kill maybe three times. But I'm going to do something that's going to help the graphite stay in the piece and give you a little bit longer working time on your piece. So I call these, some of the things that I'm going to talk about are what I call volatile. They're embellishments that you put on at the end of a piece. They don't have a lot of life left in them. You need to protect them when they go in. So every time we go in the kill and we have a volatile element like graphite or some of the painting colors or watercolor, if you're familiar with those in enameling, I'm going to put a little coat of 2015 on. So this is a flux. So it's kind of like a clear coat of something that's protecting um, the under layers. I use a very thin coat of it, maybe a 200 mesh, and you're going to see me do that in my piece. So that's pretty good for a gal that can't draw. So I'm going to write cool tools on here. Well, I didn't, I didn't get a major in graphics either, so <laughs> there you go. We're going to, I'm going to show you how much to put on here. We've got our 200 mesh sifter, and this is one of the few times you're not using a surfactant and you're not going to spray it on. If I spray this now, the graphite that I have in this piece would smear. It's just holding in there because it's got open pores. I don't want to put any liquid on here. So I'm going to dry sift. I've got a penny in there. And we're talking that much, just a hair. and I'm gonna fire these pieces in the kiln. So, you're tired of sprinkling enamels and you really would like to paint. I have got the stuff for you. You've been waiting your whole life for a wonderful set of colors like this to put on an enamel body. These are called sunshine colors. They're heavily oxide, but they have a grit in them and um, a glass component, so they come out shiny. Some of you who are china painters are used to the china paints, and if we use china paints on enamel, sometimes they work. But uh, a lot of the china paints don't have enough of the glass fret on them, so they end up looking chalky and uh, not very pretty for enamel purposes. Some of the hardest colors to get in enamel are purples and reds. This is a beautiful set, and there's about 20 colors. I'm missing a few that are in the complete set, and this will last a lifetime. I have the pieces that we did in the graphite portion, and we're going to colorize them. So I've got some water here. I'm going to put these in a container. The nice part about these is once you put it in the tray, you just cover this with a Ziploc bag, and you just rehydrate it again. So every bit of this is useful material. Um, I'm going to take this, they basically look like the colors that they are, unlike some enamels that look very different from what they fire out to be. I'm going to put a little bit of this blue oxide in here. If you put it on very thick, it's going to crack. So you may have to build up layers of colors. I'm going to put a little bit more in that so you can see how saturated this color can be. Now, when we start adding a lot of embellishments to our piece, they're usually all water-based products. When you put water-based products on a glass surface, they're just going to roll around. And that's when, guess what, we're going to use this again. So we have our surfactant. We're going to put a little bit of, of that on each one of these surfaces that I'm going to paint today. and I'm going to wipe it off. So.
So let's, I'll show it to you on a bigger scale because it's easier to see and then we'll go down to these pieces. If you have a watercolor background, you're going to love this. Uh, I like the fact that it looks like someone's been here. You know, it's not a stencil, it's not a uh, grid pattern, it's not cloisonné wires that are in a little area, but it looks like somebody painted this, which, guess what, I'm painting it, so I guess I am. And that's a beautiful brushwork stroke, and that's all going to show up in the final piece. If you ever did sponge painting back in the early 2000s, you could get a sponge out and sponge paint the sawn. There's a lot of any of the techniques that you've used in your painting classes that you took before you got into enameling will work for this product. I'm going to come in and do a little bit of blue on cool tools because guess what? It's cool. And because these are uh, expensive, you want to take care not to contaminate our colors in between. Let's put a red on here because that's my favorite color in enameling and it's the hardest color to work with. And this one is beautiful. I probably put too much water in there. Now, if these were your own personal set that you had at your house, you could actually mix some of them with glycerin. You could mix them with clear fire. Or if you come from an oil painting background and you want a, a surface that you can go back in and rework over and over again, you could mix this with a squeegee oil, and that would enable you to do that. But I like something that's immediate. It doesn't smell. I don't have to dry it. It's ready to go in the kill pretty easily. Oh, that heart's not very red, is it? Let's put some more in there. So I could build up <clears throat> the color intensity by putting several coats of this on. So if some of you think that enameling takes four or five times in the kill, I have pieces that I've worked on that go in the kill 20 and 30 times. You have to be careful about your firing temperature and you keep it in there where it's just fused so you can save your colors uh, to complete the end of the process. Sometimes we don't know when our enamels are going to be done. And let's just color this background a little bit. It's a good thing I like mechanical tools because I can't paint very well. So. I'm going to let these dry, and before they go in the kiln, I'm going to put a light sifting of 2015 uh, on top, the flux color. So why am I doing that? If I sifted it on right now, all of this enamel would go to the wet spots. That would be too much on there. So I need to dry the surface first, and then come back and dry sift it. And it's going to protect this color so when it comes out of the kiln, I haven't lost it because the heat in the kill has kind of destroyed it. I'll be doing another video about Scraffito, but I do want to show you a little way that I'm going to do this with the watercolor that is dried. This is a clay shaper, a chisel angle clay shaper, yeah. And I can come back in here. If I don't like the way that I've drawn a piece, if I want to change it just a little bit so it has more of a pattern, it's wonderful. So Scraffito means you're taking something out. I don't think it's going to help these pieces look better, but what the heck. Well, there you go. And So before we go in the kill, we want to protect this so if uh, we get a little bit of heat on there, it's going to retain the color. Notice how I'm going to take this and get rid of it before I do the, my 2020. I don't want to contaminate my enamels. 2015, sorry. 
I've got a 200 mesh. I'm not going to spray it because I don't want to activate this. And that's enough. I'm going to take these over to the kill and fire them. And I'll show you what we got. So you have to watch your firing temperature on here. We've put that flux on the top layer, but it can't go to a high temperature. So I like to keep the sunshine colors down in about the 1300, 1350 range. And then when these cool, our red is going to be bright and brighten up. And I'll show you these in just a minute. So here are our finished pieces. That light coat of 2015 on the top has really helped seal in our blue. Uh, and look at this bright red. Who doesn't like a little bit of red in their life? And cool tools. Thank you for having me. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.